Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me. It's Neil Phillips, the Wine Tipster here. I'm delighted to be on Racing Welfare and Racing Conversation. So uh, make sure you, you get your questions in. Um, and we're going to talk about my background in terms of how I got into horse racing, obviously also how I got into uh, food and drink as well. And uh, I must apologise, by the way, for the background here. We, I've had a bit of signal trouble elsewhere because some of you might have seen on some of the other pieces during lockdown, seen my bar, um, which has been doing very well during the whole lockdown situation. And um, but you might have seen the back, you know, with lots of bottles in the background and stuff there. But uh, I've had to change location here. So sorry about the sort of rather minimalist background, but I've got a couple of other props to show you a little bit later. Uh, and what's one thing before I kick off and just do a bit of background? It's the last day of the Racing Welfare Auction. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. I was just looking this morning to see that bids, all the bids that everybody's put in, which has been great with all these fantastic auction lots, across a, I love the range as well I would say is it over 48,000 pounds that'd be brilliant to get to 50,000 pounds over 50,000 pounds so ladies and gentlemen let's get there uh I know we obviously finished tonight at 8 p.m and I know what happens in the, the auctions you you build up then we had a bit of a sort of lull on Monday and Tuesday and then everybody goes come on we're going to do it by the way you can actually bid for a wine tasting with me um, uh, it may have to be a virtual session and we can always talk about how we're going to manage that. Uh, so you can find a lot there to have a, a virtual taste of me up to 10 people and we can discuss the theme. OK, whether you want to have, say something related to bubbles or you want to do a bit of a vino journey across several different countries. You might say to me, oh, well, let's do great varieties that maybe some people haven't heard of that much, but I think are great value. So uh, make sure you get bidding there. But also there's also the those other fantastic lots as well which are really tremendous and I think it's absolutely fantastic to see what's been happening there so I just want to bring you a bit of intro there as well so in terms of me the wine tipster so uh, during lockdown what I do because obviously I haven't been presenting at race courses clearly and I'll come on to the background about how I got involved in uh, presenting at racing race courses a little bit later but to say during lockdown I'm also involved as an ambassador of the Prosecco DOC consortium DOC meaning a designated area for Prosecco so we've done lots of virtual events uh, during lockdown at home obviously and that has been very very successful and there's loads more of those planned as well and we also have a wine PR business too which has been incredibly busy I'm pleased to say but also you would have noticed some of you I hope or maybe you might have seen on some of the stuff on racing TV, for example, is that what I've been doing is um, doing things like for, you know, I did some work in terms of Goodwood, for example. I was promoting the hampers there. I was asked, you know, we're doing a video in the garden, all sort of picnic set up as well. I've done quite a lot of videos in the front garden in terms of racing pieces for new markets obviously racing welfare as well we had that wonderful furlong factor competition which was absolutely incredible what a great winner we had there with Lara Telfer as well brilliant but the and doing lots of that work as well so it's been a, amazing how we have to adapt all of us but also what has been great has been the support for racing, racing welfare and that continued support I know will happen now just for me in terms of background I grew up in Gloucestershire so my nearest this race course is obviously Cheltenham, 15 miles away uh, from where I was born. And where my parents lived, it was just outside of Market Town Stroud. And there were horses in the field behind uh, my parents' house. And I don't know what I did as a five year old, but I'm fascinated by horses. I love horses and uh, you know, cows and stuff and all sorts of <laughs> farm, yard, farm animals. But some, for some reason, when I started watching the television and I was watching horse racing and I heard the voice of horse racing in terms of um, Sir Peter O'Sullivan, that's maybe some sort of trigger with me. Something happened there where I thought at the age of five, I thought what I would wanted to do was actually be a horse racing commentator. And I was fascinated 
by Sir Peter's brilliant voice and something I picked up there obviously with a love of horses that I'd seen in the field behind my parents house and so what I started to do was and my parents were telling me about this that when they walked into I, I had lots of toys lots of horses so I could commentate on races and I started to get more of them because I wanted to commentate on the Grand National and so my parents when they walked into the lounge I would immediately stop commentating so my love of racing started really when I was about five years old and has obviously remained ever since. But it just shows you the and what I the, that attraction to the racing coverage. And what I used to love doing was obviously when the coverage was on the BBC at that time was watching all the coverage. I always remember a horse called Spanish Step. Some of you will remember Spanish Step. Wonderful, wonderful racers. And really that was the first horse that I, in a way, really got involved with and, and remembered watching and, and remembered all his great successes. And I think he lived to a great age of about 35, I remember. So very much looking at the horses, looking at the horses in the paddock, something we, you know, you still very much do when you have the chance to go racing, when we will go racing again. That's something I've always enjoyed and going to the pre-parade ring, which I think is one of, is the great place to go and look at horses, isn't it? But I think that was a big thing for me and following that coverage. But I tried to assess horses in terms of look and think if I was having a bet, obviously I couldn't bet at that point, but if I was having a bet, you know, what I wanted to do was try and work out that winner. And I became fascinated with the Grand National. And I've got lots of racing books about the Grand National. There's a book I've got about 40 Grand Nationals. Uh, and obviously the story of Rummy, who really resonated. And I, for the lots of us, he saved the Grand National, didn't he? And I'm watching that such a big build up on the day. And that's always remained for me. And, and to be able to have presented and pre I will present again at the Grand National meeting has been a great privilege. Uh, so that is something. So that is um, really a bit way that that sort of went all through my teens as well. But in terms of direction, I took um, my parents in terms of the wine side were part of a wine society. They made home homemade wine, they enjoyed a wine society. And when I, I went off to, I did my A-levels and I went off to Sheffield to study there. And I was going to do law because uh, I've got a law A level and my mum really wanted me to do law, but I decided to do a degree in urban studies. And some of you would be saying, what is urban studies? Well, it was economics, law, sociology, because I had an A level in sociology. But I, I really loved Sheffield because there were great bands, basically. So I, I went there and I'd really, because of my parents' love of wine and interest in wine, I'd also, by the time I went off to uni, got a real interest in wine. I think I was one of the only people who was ordering wines from the Sunday Times Wine Club, in actual fact, at that point. But it's sort of that combination. But what I was doing was keeping up with the racing. That was the point. I was still going racing and I was very, you know, I was a member at Cheltenham, for example. So I had that involvement running sort of concurrently with my studies. And when I graduated, I got my degree in urban studies. I wasn't sure what to do, to be honest. And I went to a wine tasting uh, with my parents at their wine society, eight Chardonnays from around the world. And we actually had to taste the Chardonnays blind. So all the bottles were covered up and you had to try and guess, you know, and I had never been to a wine tasting, but I had the interest and dad, bless him, had really taught me a lot. But I thought, I've got to try and guess where they're from. And of course, what I did, I got zero out of eight in that, which was uh, not a great start to a career in wine tasting. I always remember, interesting enough, that my favourite Chardonnay out of the tasting was actually a Chardonnay from California. And I'll come back to California in a minute. Anyway, I did that, but then I went off and studied at the Wine and Spirit Education Trust, a fantastic organisation. And got my high certificate and in the less days when you wrote letters and sent letters to people making job applications i ended up managing a shop a retail shop in terms of wine and then i moved on to wine sales and i went on and worked in terms of working for a brewer in actual fact called charles Wells, had a fantastic wine portfolio and i worked for a company called ernest and julia Gallo, a big californian company but i was very much involved with their premium wines and I worked for nine years at a company called Perna Rica, and I did who you would know possibly about Jacobs Creek, Campo Viejo, but also main spirits like Martel. So I actually went up to them when Martel sponsored the Grand National. I went up for several years to host guests of that, which was actually a brilliant thrill, of course. So good morning to everybody, by the way. Keep coming and saying good morning, everyone. That's good to see. And um, But I, I wanted to, so I, I did 
all of that as a journey. And I started doing a lot more presenting when I was at Pernod Ricard in terms of radio campaigns, videos, etc. So all that was going on the drink side. But meanwhile, taking ourselves back a bit here, I was obviously going racing. I was a member at Cheltenham. I was part of um, Axum. So I had a share in Dino's Bino. And, and one of the things, you know, in terms of your favourite racehorse, it has to be Dino's Bino. What a wonderful, wonderful horse he was. And obviously that performance when he won the law Long walk at Ascot with AP McCoy on board. I mean, I and obviously Dino's passed away recently, and I, you know, you were re-watching that race, and it was, it was great to see. And I, I went to Cheltenham. I don't think ever really Cheltenham was really his bag, to be honest. But obviously, he was so impressive at Ascot, and as we know, AP paid him so many compliments um, when we heard the news about Dino Dino's been his passing, and he had a great time as well down in retirement at Greatwood you know, retraining uh, re racehorses. And it's really fantastic to see all the great things that are happening there in terms of retraining racehorses. And I actually went down to see Dino's Bino in January of this year. I contacted Helen and um, Sasha, the team there, and I've supported Greatwood for years and emceed their race day at Newbury. And I wanted to go and see Dino's and I'm so pleased I managed to do that and actually get some pictures with him as well. He was out, I thought he was going to pull me down to the centre of Marlborough, to be honest. Um, and that was about three miles away. But he it was it was great to go and see him. So that was my I was getting shares in horses, having that involvement in that way. And actually, while I was in the drinks industry, I did apply for some jobs in racing. So I was wanting to bring that all together. And the way it all sort of came together was when I was at Penarica, I uh, went freelance in 2009, so I was still presenting for them. But also my wife, Louise, her background is in PR. We set up a wine PR company and I wanted to bring the racing element into it. I wanted to start getting into doing some work in the racing industry. And Louise came up with the 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 name the wine tipster which has been was absolutely fantastic idea by louise and i've got to give louise all the credit for that it's great a lot of people don't know i'm called neil but they do know i'm called the wine tipster so that's great and i approached race courses to say what i wanted to do was come to race meetings and talk about being uh going into the restaurants and, and talking about the food and drink element because i've done a lot of presenting with chefs over the years as well and I love working with chefs, but also with my racing interests as well and, and, and to mark the card as a tipster, but also to give everybody a great race day experience and people who might be racing for a long come racing for years on years, but also for people who might have just been coming to their first meeting in a restaurant. So that's I got a lucky break by a lady, Joanna Winnell, saw me present at the at Cheltenham Food and Drink Festival, saw me doing a masterclass there. They asked me to come up and present at the Cheltenham race course on one occasion. And a wonderful guy called Phil Roberts had just started a general manager in hospitality. And he said, look, why don't you come back? And when we do the showcase meeting, we're going to be launching the new wine list. Why don't you come back and do that and present to the box holders? And that's how it started. So I got a very lucky break there because then it grew into presenting, obviously, for Compass, which is Jockey Club Catering and their joint venture with the Jockey Club. And I've ended up, of course, going around to present at all the courses. And so I do work for the Jockey Club and Compass as well. But obviously that started off with some of the racing TV coverage as well, where I approached them about doing some of the hospitality pieces, IT. TV. I work for Unibet in terms of writing a blog for them as well. So and I really enjoy, I'm very analytical, actually, I love numbers. So I really look at, enjoy looking at racing form. So all of that has really developed so in alongside all the drinks presenting I do as well in lots of different media. So yesterday, for example, I was doing some five minute pitches for Christmas coverage. So for one of my clients. So there's real variety there. And we have, as I said, our PR business as well. Just to backtrack one as well is the fact, you know, in terms of my racing interest, you know, when we had Channel 4 racing and they had the morning line and they had the monkey business competition, you could get a £500 free bet. And, you know, I used to watch the, the morning line, obviously, every Saturday. And I kept ringing up for three years thinking, come on, give me the opportunity to get on and have a go at the monkey business. And one time they called me back. And so I remember it was a race at York. 
big 20 runner handicap and I went for a horse called Vintage Premium, bit of a drinks link there, obviously. And he was 20 to one. And I remember when I was watching the race live in the afternoon thinking, wow, well, he's going to he's going to be in the first four. There was no doubt about it. First four had gone clear, but he was leading the way and then he got up to win. So I actually won six thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds there. And I remember one of my friends phoned up straight after the the live broadcast and said, oh, well done. I told him to get off the phone because I thought I'm sure Channel 4 will give me a call. And Tomo came on the line and I, I sounded pretty relaxed, really. I said, oh, it's really exciting. And they put me on the show the next week. I said, well, I'll come down and do a piece at Newbury. Be great fun. And so I'm, I went on. John McCreary was there. Bless him. Wonderful time with John. What an analytical guy John was as well. Just remember that. What a great character. And I went down and did that. And also... Another story for you here is that I interviewed a lady called Barbara Bank from Jackson Family Wines. And you know they've had some very, very famous racehorses. They have their stud. They have a lot of racehorses still as well as making fantastic wines. And I was interested interviewing Barbara about her Californian wines. I should have said that. And, and that's where I've come back to my original link. I love Californian wines, by the way. I think they're completely underrated. But the... Um, I interviewed because I wanted to talk to Barbara about her California wines. And she said, oh, I've got a couple of two-year-olds to, to name next week. And I said, why don't you call one of the horses the wine tipster? And the following week, and I've got this email, obviously, is that I... I got an email through saying, Wine Tipster, the racehorse, is running at Gulfstream Park in Florida on Saturday. So I thought, wow, I'm running in a race in the States. This is amazing. And uh, so I, I shouldn't really say this on a Facebook live, but I backed myself. You know, I phoned up and said, look, I'd like to have £10 to win on Wine Tipster. And I won. Absolutely brilliant. I remember because of the time difference. I think it was out of the theatre that evening or something bonkers. But um, and I remember looking funny. I won my race. Um, and I went on to run other races. I'm now doing dressage, by the way. So I just want to make sure, you know, wine tipster, he, he's alive and kicking and he's doing some dressage as well. But it was a, I cost about, um, I think I cost about $370,000. And I did get somebody I know rated me and from time form a guy I know and he said well you're probably rated about 85 really so you know not bad not bad uh, but it's sort of uh it, it's been a great honor I've got a lovely picture of myself winning that race at Gulfstream Park in actual fact but it's just um it shows you just in terms of uh your, your journey and I feel very fortunate to be welcomed by everybody in racing uh, I'd also say on a serious note, you know, look at the way and one of the big things we've been talked about is hospitality, but look at the way that hospitality has developed. You know, Phil Roberts, who worked at Cheltenham and managed Cheltenham for five years and did a brilliant job. When you were looking at the scale that it got to, you were looking at 20 restaurants, 3000 people working in catering. I mean, if you thought that 10 years ago, you would have said it's crazy and all these different experiences and all the quality of food everywhere. You know, if you think about just a family day racing at another race course, for example, hospitality starts when somebody comes onto a race course and says, I want to have a cup of tea. So, or a coffee or, or somebody wants a soft drink, it all has to be right and has to be good. So that has grown immensely and, Clearly, what's also happened with business meetings at courses as well, all those other occasions which involve hospitality. So the way that the role that hospitality has in racing, and I, I went on Nick Luck's show and Luck and Sunday Racing TV a few months just to talk about this. And clearly, it's really, really challenging for all of us in racing, clearly, but we have to unite together. And that's what racing welfare is doing so well for me is covering all the different aspects of racing so we're very united there we need to be like that but i've obviously seen um you obviously saw at warwick on monday with the pilot event and what andre klein did with her with the general manager of Warwick. And i think they did an absolutely fantastic job i was at warwick on monday it was brilliantly done I mean, it showed you you could do a pilot event, but also you actually had people in hospitality there, socially distanced, just like a restaurant you're going to anywhere else and, and just showing how that was working. So we will come back to that, but we must unite together. And I 
you know, everybody support hospitality, please. I know we've got the new curfew ties, but we, you know, we're going to see Saturday lunches become so much more popular. That is going to become a big window, I think, in terms of restaurants opening for longer. So that's the sort of um, that gives you a bit of flavor. One thing I ought to just say is one of the other things I like to do outside of racing and food and and drink and having presented with wonderful chefs like the Ruse, for example. It's great to present with Albert and Michelle and Emily is I'm really into music and I love punk rock. You know, when it was uh, 1970, 70, I was 16. Uh, so I must admit, and I don't mean punk rock just in terms of talking about the Sex Pistols, The Clash, anybody can do that, but talking about the really obscure bands as well. And I still love all sorts of music now as well. So I love doing all that stuff as well. So I hope we've got some questions. I'm just checking on the, on the chat side here if anybody wants to ask me some questions as well. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have to keep talking, folks. Uh, but um, <laughs> ask me a question I'm, uh, about, uh, well, I don't know, really, I mean, but, but in terms of, um, actually, I want to just say, um, just in terms of race courses, for me, Cheltenham, being born in Gloucestershire, the view there, that natural up to Cleve Hill is quite amazing. But I do end up starting to talk about other courses as well. And I've, I've got a massive amount of time. We've got great race courses around the country. And obviously, it's clearly very, very challenging times for lots of courses right now. But I, I love going up to Carlisle. I think it's a great, I, I usually go and present on the Luton Bell and Cumberland Plate Day. And I think it's a brilliant course. The view from the course is great. The atmosphere is brilliant. I mean, they've got you know, jumps and flat, as we know. And I think that team are doing a brilliant job there and i've got a you know like warwick as well i live 30 miles from warwick and i, I really think that they've done a tremendous job with warwick race course but other courses around the country plumpton i really like as well and and taking your size cells right down to exeter for example and i think also one of the one of the things for me is i love the home of flat racing in terms of new market obviously got the three-day meeting starting today with with the cambridgeshire meeting i love the cambridgeshire race itself lord north was just going to cruise up last year wasn't he and uh but the that feel at the home of flat racing i really like and, and the the, the roly mile experience and in a few weeks time when we have the cesaro which that is one of my favorite races i think it's just a fantastic spectacle i i really love that and but also heading up north more is to haydock because i think haydock it's hard work at haydock with the ground you know they, they've got a lot of racing there and i think it's a great course in terms of both flat and jumps and i love to to love to go and present at Haydock typically. I also think it's got one of the prettiest parade rings in the country. Uh, so you know, I've already named about six race courses, but obviously Goodwood as well. There's something very special about presenting at Goodwood. And I typically would MC their food festival. Last year I did a commentary um, on the omelette challenge, you know, with Andrea Atzini, who was putting rather too much salt into his omelette, I have to say. And, uh, and Holly Doyle was there. So we had a great commentary, live commentary on jockeys doing some omelettes there. But um, one, so that, that's a sort of gives you in terms of courses. And one of the things I'm just involved with now, as well as is a racing syndicate called My Racing Manager. So, which was started by Ellie Morgan and uh, two Cheltenham Fles Festival winners with Kustar Sivilla, which was, a, I think Kustar Sivilla had a great chance. And also Flying Tiger a couple of years ago at 33 to one, which was ridden by the champion jockey, uh, was quite a surprise, it has to be said. So we, we have a range of horses there. We sell, I'm involved selling the shares. And we, I, I really enjoy that experience, you know, going to the races. So we're looking, forward to when we can have that opportunity and we have horses with trainers like James Fanshawe, Venetia Williams, Philip Hobbs, Nick Williams. So, you know, that is a great and we must keep our syndicates going at all levels, clearly. Now, I mean, some of you might be um, I'm just hoping someone's going to ask some questions, but uh, I'll keep I'll keep rocking. And uh, but the uh, the thing I was going to, also going to say is that uh, one of the other things is in terms of people sometimes say to me, just, you know, what about, you know, talking about chefs, uh, like the Ruse, presenting with Raymond Blanc. But I think it's a really exciting to present with chefs, at, you know, with Michelin-style restaurants, your local restaurant, 
watching young people coming into service it, it, the service industry is really important to me obviously from a service point of view but also from a chefing point of view and we have to continue to encourage people to come into hospitality remain in hospitality as well that is vitally important and that is what we've got to continue to see there as well and now another thing is as well sometimes people say to me well what's your uh you know, in terms of what wines do you like to drink? Uh, but uh, I, I, the journey has to be one of continued discovery for me, I have to say. And I'm going to mention just a couple of wines because um, Mark was saying to me, well, it'd be great if you just mentioned uh, from Racing Welfare, it'd be great if you mentioned a couple of wines. Um, now, if you're out and about, folks, and this is, this is some Californian wines, in actual fact, uh, there's a range of wines called Dark Horse, and this is not just because of the name. Uh, you have a range of wines. You'll see them around a lot. They're about eight pound fifty, and it's you know you don't typically find Californian wines under ten pounds. But they, um, I would say, is you've got the California. Uh, you've got the sorry. You've got the Chardonnay. You've got the Cabernet Sauvignon. I think the Chardonnay at eight fifty is absolutely fantastic value, and I think you'll see that in Waitrose and Tesco's, those sort of uh, retailers. So you see that around as well. I'd also give a shout out and say, um, here, I'm just going to hold this up. I hope you can just see this all right. This is from Portugal. Uh, it's a Trincadeira. It's from Esperal. This is in Waitrose. I have to say the bottle's empty. Uh, <laughs> this is the other, other last weekend. Um, but this is about 10 quid. And I think Portuguese reds, and this is from Alentejo, which is a fantastic area in the south of Portugal. Brilliant place to go and visit, by the way third of portugal it takes up I mean, it has a 20 only five percent of the population but it's also um it's it is a really good to have this red so look out for portuguese reds so you can see some in majestic as well i'd mention also a very good online company with lots of us are ordering online at the moment and that's a company called uh, slurp wine and if you look out for them i think they've got a really really good range of wines as well so you want to certainly look out for slurp and the other thing to say is and this is really um hot off the press this is more than 10 quid okay this is a wine this is yeland's estate this is l5 single block sauvignon blanc now i mention this because the you have con key con wine competitions like International Wine Challenge, the International Wine and Spirit Competition, and also the Decanter Wine Awards. And this Yeelands Estate L5 single block, so it's a single vineyard Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough, from the Tree Valley. So it's a bit further south in Marlborough if anybody's been out to New Zealand and been to Marlborough specifically. And this won a best, uh, best in show award yesterday and that i think 50 wines get that award out of there's thousands and thousands of wines that are entered into this competition so you need to look out for uh this wine i think it's a great example if you want to buy top class sauvignon blanc this is a sort of sauvignon blanc some sauvignon blancs are great to drink now you want to drink them over the next few months great wonderful zingy acidity which we love that really refreshing character fantastic with fish and chips i always think Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough tastes great with fish and chips, but also um, this is a this is a really complex wine. It's got so much going on here. I think it's absolutely fine, fantastic, and I think you can get it from the great wine company. I'll post something on Twitter if you follow me at the Wine Tipster, and we'll post something on Facebook as well. I'll just give you a list of the wines I've talked about this morning and where you can buy those wines as well. So. Uh, you know, th th I think that is brilliant and top notch Sauvignon Blanc, I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, but, you know, that's just covering a couple of wines for you. You can track me down and keep up with everything else I'm going on there. And one thing I, I, you know, in terms of subject of wine, you know, when some of you have seen the racing TV uh, work I've done with the, the wonderful guys, Tom Stanley, Rishi Passat, for example, um, we just have a, a most fan fantastic time tasting uh, i know tom likes his wine particularly likes his white wine so i need to tell him about that uh, l5 single block yulin's estate sauvignon blanc but it's great fun presenting with them and everybody is so helpful to us in terms of presenting and i really want to say you know all the hospitality people the race course but what fantastic food uh, companies we have drinks companies 
chefs, everybody involved. And it's really, really exciting. And we have a lot of fun, as you would have seen. And we taste the most incredible dishes. But some of you might have seen the piece I did at the uh, York Ebor Festival for uh, Racing TV. And I, I'm, you know, we've got to promote everybody locally as well. And I contacted the pie company, for which would normally be on the York uh, race course for the Ebor Festival, Jed Bell's pies and his son Lee and I spoke to him and I said could you send me a couple of pies and they sent a couple of port pies to Chipping Norton which I collected from the Chipping Norton sorting office uh, and one of the pies had Ebor on it and the other pie had 2020 so it's just um you know and I use those on racing I've got to say absolutely fantastic pies uh brilliant but also we tied in there to uh Ains DLs who are based in York and moving out of out of York itself, uh, we went to the Rydell Vineyards in Yorkshire. I think it's our most northerly commercial vineyard. They're doing so well. And they sent me one of their reds as well, which I thought was great. So look out for the reds there. But hope you've enjoyed the journey here in terms of my wine tips, the journey in terms of my love of racing since I've been you know, five years old. I never made it as a commentator. I admire our commentators immensely. And I, I loved the racing welfare and for the Henry Cecil, Henry Cecil uh, virtual open weekend. I love the commentator challenge, but I really admire commentators. And we are blessed with so many great voices in racing, which is brilliant. Uh, but also my love of horses. So that is something in terms of my involvement. Great word still. And and I just love I just love horses and I think it's really great that we're doing more and more for retired racehorses and I think that's fantastic, but also my love of racing has continued and also my love of studying form. You know I have to write a column um, for this Saturday, obviously for the Cambridgeshire. You know hopefully I haven't seen the decks actually to, um, for this morning, but let's um, so Busker's going to win a race. He's going to win a, a big race, I'm sure, if he has been declared. Uh, but uh, you know, last year I tipped up Lord North. I mean, it was easy peasy, wasn't it? Real cru cruise control there for Frankie. But um, I hope you enjoy that journey. And you know, we let let's all keep together, everybody. Let's keep being positive, uh, supporting racing, supporting racing welfare but also all the elements associated with racing um, and keep engaged. I will post everything up there as the wine tipster. It's been great to come on this morning. It's been a privilege to come on and be on Racing Welfare's Racing Conversation. Look at all the wonderful people who have been on over the last few months. It's been absolutely fantastic. And I just want to say, hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, show? I don't know. Hope you've enjoyed me just talking at you for about half an hour. But um, you can. I hope you've enjoyed the journey, and it's been a fantastic journey. And I'm. I've been very fortunate, and I have a, a job I love, and all aspects of the job I love. And I'm a very fortunate person. And I want to say thanks to everybody who's been so good to me in making that this journey happen and making the journey continue to happen as well. And that that is very, very exciting for me. So thank you very much. I would normally raise a glass at this point in time, but it's uh, I've got some water here. I've got my local brewer, actually, Chadlington Hills here. But uh, I would just like to say uh, enjoy the new market meeting over the next three days. Um, it's been obviously, you know, really, I really like the Cambridge meeting. We've got some cracking racing there as ever. And don't forget the racing welfare auction closes at 8 p.m. Come on, let's get over that 50,000 pound mark, everybody. Fantastic support. Thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you soon. And I will be posting the selections, wine selections, and some racing selections on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.